So today we will discuss about the topic solidification of the metals. So solidification, it is the process of conversion of molten liquid into the solid state with the help of cooling curve or with the help of some of critical cooling rate or cooling rate. So a pure metal solidifies at a one fixed temperature, a fact which can be checked by plotting a cooling curve. So a cooling curve may be obtained by melting small amount of metal and recording the temperature drop at suitable time intervals. As this metal solidifies, the metal must be allowed to cool very slowly, that is under equilibrium conditions. So here in this concept, what is the important thing is that uh, the metal is uh, in the liquid state be above the its melting temperature or melting point. After that, whenever we are starting the cooling from that higher temperature to lower temperature, so it will get solidified. That is, it will get converted from liquid to liquid plus solid, and after finally it will convert the into the solid. So that process of cooling of the molten metal or liquid from liquid state to solid state is called as a solidification of the metal. So we can then plot the graph of temperature against the time to give the give us the cooling curve for the particular metal. So here in this diagram you can see the simplified cooling curve for pure copper. So on uh, x axis there is a time and on y axis, there is a temperature in degree Celsius. So, this is the higher temperature range that is a 1500 and above degree Celsius. So, that here the hmm, copper is present in the molten liquid form. Again, from higher temperature, temperature drops starts. So, up to somewhat just below the 1100 that is 1100 degree celsius the phase of the copper is is a metal is in molten liquid state so for this temperature and for this period of time the pure copper present in the molten liquid form after that we are keeping the constant so here at point a solidification starts so solidification starts means what here first a liquid droplet converted into the solid that is nothing but the nuclei of a solid will get formed and further growth of that nuclei occurs and cluster of nuclei and further atomic structure is atomic structure production is formed or the crystal structure will get formed for the metal so for here uh, region ab uh, there will be the liquid plus solid state so here in this uh, point a the solidification starts the amount of solid is less and amount of liquid is more as soon as the time is given for from a to b at point b the solidification ends so at point b what happen uh, the last liquid droplet will get converted into the solid so here at point B, the amount of solid will be 100% and amount of liquid will be 0%. It means the solidification is completed, entire liquid metal is get, gets converted into the solid. So this is the second step, um, AB. After that, from B to C, there will be again cooling of that metal from this temperature to the room temperature. So that the desired, uh, there will be no change in the microstructure or crystal structure, but uh, the refinement of the grains occurs. Uh, the stresses can be induced or can be reduced, or the properties are going to achieve in the metals. So, in this way, the cooling curve 
for pure metal is described. <coughs> Next, nucleus formation. So here, as a metal is cooled, cluster of atoms come together from the liquid to form a solid crystal nuclei. So here, uh, compound nuclei formation is shown in the figure. So the fusion products are formed here. So the initially first nuclei is formed. After that, cluster of atoms come together from the liquid from the solid crystal nuclei. So the nuclei will be able or the nuclei will be stable and grow into crystallites or grains. So the nucleation can occur by two processes, homogeneous nucleation and heterogeneous nucleation. That is a uniform nucleation and non-uniform nucleation. Then next is the mechanism of crystallization. So crystallization is controlled by atomic diffusion from male to the nuclei. Characteristically, a pure metal may crystallize in a tree branch pattern from a nucleus. Such formation is called as a dendrites or dendrites. So the microstructure of copper tin alloy showing branch like dendritic formation. So this is a because of the nucleation or after the solidification process, the alloy will be formed in dendritic formation or feathery structure. Then the microstructure of brass alloy showing the branch like dendritic formation. So this is the microstructure of the brass alloy, which shows this type of structure, branch type of the structure that is called as a dendritic structure or dendrites. In crystallization, growth start from the center of the nuclei and the crystal grow towards each other. When two or more crystal collides, their growth is stopped. Finally, the entire space is filled with the crystals. So stages of the formation of metallic grains during the solidification of the molten metal. So here in diagram A, initial first uh, liquid droplets starts converted into the solid. Then in diagram B, further growth of the nuclei will get starts. In C, the amount of solid increases and amount of liquid decreases. And in diagram D, you can clearly see there will be no liquid state, only solid remains or formation of the solid occurs. So these are the stages of formation of metallic grains during the solidification of the pure metal. The metal is therefore made up of thousands of tiny crystals. Such metal is said to be polycrystallized. So each crystal in the structure is known as a grain. Next is the grain size. So the factor affecting the grain size, the number of locations of the nuclei at the time of solidification, then the shape of the mold in the metal solidifies. Then third is the rate of crystallization. Next is the rate of cooling. Next is the cold working. Next is the nucleating agents. So these are the factors affecting the grain size of the metal. So in this diagram, you can see the three different grain sizes for the metal or materials. So here first diagram, the grain size is quite larger. Then two types of grains will be there. One is ferrite and cementite. Here in the second diagram, alpha ferrite structure is there. You can see the uniform grains. This is also structure of the ferrite, which shows the uniform grains. So here number of grains, if more, then the grain size will be larger. And if the number of grains are less, then the grain size is a minimum.
So this is the polycrystalline metal shape of the grains is influenced by the shape of the moon. So here you can clearly see the sum of the grains influenced by the shape of the mold. So the mold shape is acquired by the microstructure or the grains of the crystal or metal. Next is a control of grain size. So the smaller the grain size of the metal, the better is the physical properties and can be controlled to an extent by super cooling and rate of cooling. So if a grain also a cooling rate is a slow, then the grain size will be the smaller. And if the fast cooling is there, then uh, grain size will be larger. That is a coarse grain structure and fine grain structure. The latent heat given by the initial solidification rises the temperature in the vicinity of the solidification front. And this condition becomes favorable for the dendrites growth resulting in columnar grains. If the mold had, had been cylindrical grains, would have a growth perpendicular. Such grains are called as a radial grains. So decrease in the size can have the number of beneficial effects on the cast alloy structure of a crown or removable partial dendrites. The finer grain size can raise the yield stress, increase the ductility and increase the ultimate strength. The change in the grain size is related to the process of plastic deformation and fracture. Next is the grain boundaries. The grain boundaries is assumed to be a region of transition between differently oriented crystal lattice of two neighboring grains. So uh, two grains are separated by a boundary that is called as a grain boundary. So the structure is more nearly non-crystalline particularly towards the central region of the grain boundary. Impurities in the metal may be found in greater concentration at the grain boundaries. Also, this region is readily attacked by the chemicals. So the, this is the microstructure of the gold casting. Here, you can see that the number of grains are separated by using the grain boundary. So this is, for example, grain number one, grain number two, grain number three, grain number four, five, six, seven etc so the grain uh, the number of grains are connected inter with each other by using a boundary so this boundary is called as a grain boundary so this is the microstructure of the gold casting so it has been observed that the position of the neighboring atoms surrounding Every atom of the crystal lattice is identical in the pure crystalline metal. When the property of identical periodic points in the space was explored mathematically, it was discovered there are 14 ways to arrange the point in a space. So thank you for the watching.